schematic diagrams and pictorials. Uh, over the years, I've seen a lot of uh, mechanics, apprentices struggle with diagrams. Diagrams are very, very important in understanding how to not only learn and see how a piece of equipment operates, but it also gives us insight on sequence of operation. It gives us an idea of how things are supposed to work, what switch is supposed to close, what switch is supposed to open, when is a load or motor supposed to be on, uh, given at a certain point <clears throat> in time. They're very, very important. Diagrams really is a major tool for HVAC technicians to use and troubleshoot a system. You can see even on this very first slide of this PowerPoint that a diagram can get pretty complex. It can be large. It can have a lot of stuff in it. But understanding how to read this particular diagram is absolutely key to becoming a, a good service mechanic, it's good to be to learn how to read a schematic if you're going to install HVAC systems. It is one of the probably, in my opinion, the most important part of the HVAC industry. So, <clears throat> if we look at our next slide here. Diagrams come in two different forms. We have pictorial and ladder schematic diagrams. Pictorial diagrams show how components are actually wired. Okay, the problem is with pictorial diagrams is that they can become very cumbersome. They can become very large and they can become very confusing when it comes to reading them. The pictorial diagram is right here. As you can see, it's a picture. Okay, it has a picture of the motor with the wires getting connected to it. Here's the picture of the transformer. It shows us our 120 volt primary side with an actual 24 volt side. When you get into the real world and you start seeing pictorial diagrams, especially if you're dealing like with a rooftop unit or something like that, those diagrams are massive. They are confusing in sometimes, especially if they're drawn in the same color. Today, and from what I've seen out in the field, is a lot of pictorial diagrams are not being drawn in just black and white. They're being drawn uh, in color codes. But even though that they're color coding your, the diagrams to, for ease of, of troubleshooting and following, the bigger they get, sometimes the more difficult the diagram can still be. Because you got to remember, the more wires there are, the more lines there's going to be on a diagram. The other diagram, the schematic diagram, it more presents a logic of the circuit in an organized fashion. And the schematic diagrams, they are less cluttered because they use, instead of just pictures, they use symbols to re represent that particular component. What I have here is I have a pictorial diagram of the very same circuit. Okay, so here's my L1, here's my neutral. Here's my L1, here's my neutral. Okay, here's my motor. Instead of drawing a picture of a motor, I'm taking it and I'm making a circle with an M in it to signify the motor. Here's my normally open contact from my relay. 
there's my normally open contact for my relay. Okay, here's my symbol for my transformer. Again, instead of drawing a picture of a transformer, I'm using a symbol to represent that very same component. So there's my transformer in a symbol. Here's my transformer drawn as a picture. I have designated each side of my transformer, my 120 volt side and my 24 volt side, as I would in my schematic diagram. So here's my 120 volt side. Here's my 24 volt side. I've also have my switch. Okay, here's my thermostat switch. Here's my thermostat switch on my 24 volt side and my coil for my relay, which is right here. When you are using a ladder diagram, you can easily understand the sequence and the wiring of that circuit. We know that in order for this particular piece of equipment to turn on, which is a relatively simple one, which is nothing more than a relay and a motor, my switch needs to close first in order to energize my 24 volt coil, which is right here. So here is my 24 volt circuit right here, big circle. That switch has to close first in order for the next line and for the next component in that line to operate. And in this case, it's a coil. Once that coil gets energized, everything happens on my 120 volt side. My contact will close which will then energize my motor. We can see the same exact concept with the pictorial, but your ladder diagram schematic is easier in a more organized fashion to understand the sequence of operation and how a particular circuit is supposed to work. Here's another diagram of a ladder. It's a little more complicated, but it's still the same concept. When we are looking at a ladder diagram, we are looking at L1 and L2. L1 and L2 always signifies our power, or L1 in neutral signifies our power lines. L1, positive, neutral, negative. Those are our power lines. That's where we begin our troubleshooting on any particular piece of equipment. Do I have power between L1 and L2? If this is like a 208, 230 type application, or if it's L1 and neutral, if it's a 120 volt application. If we make sure that we have power going across here, we should be having power across each one of our branches. Hence the name ladder diagram. You could always think of the sides as the sides of the ladder. Okay? Each horizontal part of it could be a rung of the ladder. So here's rung one, here's next one, two, here's three. Each horizontal line contains at least one load and at least one switch. Okay? Each load line may be numbered for ease of identification. You will see this happen on much larger diagrams, especially if you're dealing into commercial sites where for ease of identification and finding particular components in the diagram, it will give you a legend of what rung or what line number that particular component could be found on. Okay, when we come to reading a schematic diagram, we want to follow some very basic rules. Okay? When it comes to it, we want to read a schematic like it's a book. 
We read it like a book, top to bottom, left to right. Okay? There must be a complete circuit for current to flow through the component. The four basic parts of a circuit is a power source, a switch, a path, and a load. We have to have those components in order for us to have a complete circuit for current to flow. Each contact and switch are drawn in their normal position. Every time you look at a wiring diagram, it is shown with the power off. We have to read a wiring diagram and we have to use our imagination to visualize once power is applied to this schematic what is going to happen. That is the most critical part to understanding and reading a schematic is being able to use your imagination to say okay if I close my switch or my thermostat what happens next? We need to understand how wiring diagrams are wired. When a relay is energized, all of the contacts will change position. Our normally open contacts will close. Our normally closed contacts will open. They do the complete opposite once that relay coil is energized. Okay, switches or components that are used to provide the function of stops or starts are normally closed and generally going to be wired in series with some sort of load. That could be a motor, it could be a resistive load like an electric heater, it could be any sort of power consuming device that is in that circuit. Switches or components used to provide the function of starting are going to be normally open and are going to be wired in parallel of that circuit. Okay, remember when we are always looking at a wiring diagram, all of our loads, any power consuming device is going to be wired in parallel because that load needs to receive the full source voltage that we are applying to that circuit in order for it to work properly. Okay, one thing to always remember when you are dealing with reading a schematic, all of our switches, all of our safeties, stuff like that will be wired in series, one right after another, with a load, a power consuming device. Our loads will be wired in parallel. That is really the breakdown of how to read a wiring schematic. You always start just like a book from top to bottom and you read each line left to right. Learning your sequence of operation of a particular piece of equipment is also another piece of that puzzle in order to understand how a schematic diagram works. You need to know what happens first, what happens next, what happens third, and so on and so forth. If you have no experience on a piece of equipment, it does become a little bit difficult to, to troubleshoot. But if you keep the concepts that were just discussed in this presentation, you should still be able to troubleshoot and read a schematic.